The majority of the residents here have something wrong with them long term. They use more medication, they see the vet more often. These are things that cost more money. We feel it's our privilege to do that after the service they've given to this country. And the ones that come in that have been so poorly treated, it's humanity's responsibility to do something about that. The Horse Trust started in 1886. It's actually the oldest equine specific charity in the world. And our founder, she understood that most of what was happening to London's cab horses was a result of poverty, not cruelty. So she created a charity where she could loan a healthy horse to a cab driver. He could carry on working and his very underweight animal could come and spend three months at a farm and then go back to work. It's very unusual to have a charity that looks after horses directly, that provides training, and yet is also a major funder. Normally they're two separate organisations. All charities need donors to survive, so funding is, is always the main challenge and making sure we can balance what's coming in with what we're giving out. When we receive a welfare pony in, we tend to have the sickest ones referred to us because of our research work, we're very connected to the veterinary hospitals. So we get those horses and those ponies um, to a point where they're physically healthy, but they're often emotionally very unhealthy and it can take years to rebuild trust. A number of cases come to us as a result of a tragedy like the Hyde Park bombing, after which we took Sefton, Echo and Yeti, the three most seriously injured horses, and they all retired here. Also, when other tragedies happened, like Spindles Farm, which was the big case in Amersham, where over 100 horses were, were seized in one day. Those cases are so shocking that, again, we took the 14 sickest because we were the closest, and it's inspired people to say, OK, I want to be part of helping those horses. I want to be part of their story.